Max, NFC divisional round action between the undefeated Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the four-seed Chicago Bears. One of these teams will play for the right to represent the conference in Super Bowl VIII, and the other will have to wait until Madden 22 for their chance at Madden Avengers glory. This game was good right up until the last snap, and I cannot wait to talk about it, so let's just get right into it. Bears start with the ball. Here they are a minute and a half into their drive, and Justin Fields looks deep over the middle for D.D. Westbrook, who makes the grab for a gain of 22. Nice start by Westbrook, but wait, there's more. Very next play, he makes another catch. This time it's short to the left side, and he jets ahead for another Chicago first down. Give him 13 on that one, and he's pushed out with some force there, but he makes the play anyway. Next play, again, they set up the screen to Tariq Cohen and work it to perfection. He picks up his blocks on the way to the end zone, and nobody is going to deny this man his six points. Bears strike first here. They take a 7-0 lead after their first drive. So how do the Bucks respond? Like this. First play of the drive, Tom Brady, still pretty good at throwing the football. He slings it 22 yards to Mike Evans for the first. He's touched down at the 47, and just like that, they're on the move. A couple plays later, Brady is already in the zone. He's going to put this one right on target as usual. That's O.J. Howard for 21 and a Tampa Bay first down. Tries to fight for a little bit extra, but eventually goes down at the 14. And that's not going to be a problem for anyone wearing red, because on the very next play, they do this. O.J. Howard again gets open. Brady gets it there, and the Bucks tie it up with that 14-yard strike. Scores 7-7, and Howard's so happy he gets rid of that football. It is gone forever. Next drive, Bears are rolling, approaching midfield, looking for a deep strike. And they do not want this result. Picked off by Jamel Dean, who gets completely parallel to the ground, making the play. A tremendous effort by the Bucks' corner, and they have our first takeaway of the game. Same Bucks drive, start of the second quarter. They're on their own 46-yard line, and Brady doing what Brady does best. He looks to his left and throws the deep ball to Chris Godwin, who reels it in and lands at the 33. That's a 21-yard strike for Tampa Bay. And they're on the move once again, as usual with this team. It's it's like clockwork. They get the ball, they throw it deep. A minute later, they're in Bears territory, 29 yards away from Paydirt. They get 16 of them here. Mike Evans hauls it in, and he's down at the 13-yard line. Chicago in danger of falling behind for the first time in this game. Next play, and someone call Wall Street because Goldman sacks. Eddie Goldman, that is, jumps right over his block and sacks Brady to push him back eight yards. Just a tremendous job by the Chicago defensive end. After a seven-yard gain on second and third and 11, Brady's chased out of the pocket and he's forced to throw it away, so Chicago avoids going down by seven. Tampa does kick the field goal, though, so they take a 10-7 lead. Great work by the Chicago defense, and after this play right here, they're going to be asked to do it again. Fields hits Cole Komet on the left side, and then he takes a huge hit, and not in the good way. He forces the ball loose, in fact, and Antoine Winfield scoops it up and brings it all the way back to the nine. So after that brilliant, almost, goal line stand, they're going to have to replicate that if they want to keep it a one-possession game. Can they do it? After a three-yard gain on first, Brady looks to pass on second, and Khalil Mack gets after him like a bulldog on the postman. 10-yard loss puts him back on the 16 for third down. They would gain six on that next play, but that wasn't enough, so Tampa settles again. They double the lead to six, but they definitely wanted a touchdown out of that drive. 13 to seven bucks. Bears offense couldn't reward the D with any points. They were forced to punt, so Tampa has it back, and Brady's throwing again as usual. Looking deep over the middle and finding Godwin for 36 yards, busting into Chicago territory with one big play. A few plays later, they're in the red zone now with just over a minute left in the half. Brady throwing again to the right side to his tight end Howard for 19 of the 20 yards needed to score. And then two plays later, he grabs the last one himself. Leading by example, the old man puts himself in the line of fire and gets the reward. The kick would be good and the mighty Buccaneers extend that lead to two scores, 20-7 Tampa Bay. Chicago has just about half a minute to get some of those points back, so they need to move quickly and through the air. Fields puts one right on target to Westbrook, and there's a nice 19-yard chunk right out of the gate. Good start here to end the second quarter. Next play, they're switching sides. It's a deep strike to Cole Komet on the right side, and he makes the grab for a gain of 25. 17 seconds left, and the Bears take their second timeout. After an incomplete pass on first down, they're back to the air on second, and they're going for it all here. The throw goes to the back of the end zone, and it's almost picked off, but he just can't make the grab, so the Bears get another chance. They have seven seconds left on the clock, and it's time for a decision. 
They have one timeout left, so they can afford a quick strike to the middle of the field in an attempt for, an, for the end zone. And if they come up short, they can kick a field goal and get within 10. Fields is going to drop back and look for a target, but he's only going to find one. He finds Tariq Cohen really short, who makes the grab. And in retrospect, he probably should have gone down right then and there, but he tries to run for it and gets absolutely hammered. The Bears recover the ball, but the half is over and they don't score, so it's still 20-7 Tampa. They get the ball to start the third, and Tom's back at it again with O.J. Howard 22 yards downfield, another dot right where it needs to be. Howard tiptoes a couple yards away from the sideline, but we love an overly cautious catch. Puts him right at midfield after that connection. Third and six now, and it looks like they might be in a little bit of trouble. Chicago has this play covered until Mike Evans, through sheer force of will, gets around his coverage and snags it, taking it to the 33 for a fresh set of downs. He is fired up, and he should be. That was a heroic play to keep the drive alive as they look to put the Bears in a headlock and extend the lead. Third and eight now. They've been having success through the air all day, so they try to catch the defense off guard with a handoff, and it almost works. They needed eight, but they only got seven, and a field goal only makes the lead 16, which is a two-score game, but they want to put their boot down, so they elect to go for it on fourth and one. So here they go on fourth and one. They're in a pistol formation, and Brady wants it all. He throws deep over the middle, but it's knocked away, and this promising drive ends with zero for the Bucks. Bears take over on their own 24. Four minutes and 12 seconds left in the third, and the Bears would end up using every single tick of the clock on this drive. It starts with a seven-yard rush for Tariq Cohen, and a lot of the plays were a lot like this. Nothing flashy, really. Nothing risky. Just responsible, strong, methodical football. When they threw the ball, they didn't try to force anything. They didn't look for the home run pass. They just got their yardage, moved the sticks, and kept the drive going. When they ran, they protected the ball. They hit all their blocks and controlled the line of scrimmage. This drive right here had to be a great boost to their confidence going into the final quarter of this game. And, of course, the points they scored helped that feeling, too. Four minutes, 12 seconds, 11 plays, 76 yards, all of that capped off with seven points, and going into the fourth quarter, the score would be 20 to 14. Chicago well within reach, and this game just got a whole lot more interesting. So how do the Bucks respond? Well, they're not undefeated for no reason. They show exactly why they didn't lose a single game during the regular season. They come out and say, what momentum shift? As Brady delivers another strike to his left side. Chris Godwin with the catch on that one. It's good for 18 yards, and they're deep in Chicago territory and moving rather quickly. Second and six now from the 10-yard line, and Ronald Jones takes it up the middle for eight yards. Unfortunately, the, vid the video quality gets a little bit worse here, but bear with us. The next play, Jones finishes it off with a two-yard rush, untouched to the right side, and that long Bears drive feels like ancient history at this point. Got to be a deflating thing to give up a touchdown after grabbing momentum like they did to end the third, but the Bucks do it right back, and they look to make it a 14-point lead with a two-point conversion. They try to run out of the shotgun, but the Chicago defense does manage to bear down here. I am so sorry for that. Denying entrance and maintaining the 12-point deficit. Bucks lead 26-14, and I do sincerely apologize for the punt. Next drive, second down, and it's about to feel worse for the Bears. Fields trying to make it happen. He reads the coverage wrong, throwing it to right to Winfield for his second takeaway of the game. And that one felt like it might seal Chicago's fate in this one. Well, at least it did at the time. However, later in the drive, Tampa well within scoring range, and Brady makes a rare mistake. Going for the end zone, he zips it to the left, and Desmond Trufant cuts in and snags it, and he's got a ton of daylight in front of him. He's at the 40, the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, and he gets tripped up right at the two-yard line. A definite shot in the arm for Chicago, and they are back in business. Later on third down, they go with the screen to Cohen, and Tampa was not expecting that. An easy touchdown for Tariq, and once again, the Bears have a shot. 26-21 Tampa late in the fourth. Resulting drive now, two-minute warning, and all the Bucks need is a few first downs and we can start shaking hands. It's second and two here, and they are moving the wrong way. Roquan Smith bursts in and takes Brady down for a loss of 12, and it feels like that's the exact play the Bears needed to come back and win this ballgame. They come out and pass on third and 14, and this isn't going to do it. Brady feeling the pressure from the Monsters of the Midway 2.0, delivers an uncatchable ball, and here we go. Tampa forced a punt with a minute 50 left, and this one is coming down to the wire. 
First down, they try to catch him off guard with a rush, but the defense is not fooled, and it goes for a one-yard gain. Fields sees something he wants to take advantage of, though, so they hurry back to the line, and this play goes a little bit better for him. Cameron Brait makes his first catch of the game for 17 yards and goes out of bounds at the 49-yard line, stopping the clock at a minute 22. A couple plays, and 30 seconds later, they call on him again. This catch and run goes for 23 yards, and they don't use a timeout, so the clock continues to run. Clearly, they don't want to leave Tom Brady any time, and I can't say I blame him. He'll, he'll engineer a comeback drive with 10 seconds left if they give it to him. Next play, first and 10 from the 20, and the comeback attempt is officially extinguished. Sean Murphy bunting reaches up and snags it, and this game is over. It was an incredible effort to come back, but Chicago falls just short, and the final score of this one is 26-21. Tampa Bay remains undefeated, and they'll meet Seattle in the NFC Championship. Both quarterbacks were pretty efficient today, posting a 65% completion rating, but the big difference was the touchdown to interception ratio. Fields had one touchdown, three picks. Brady also had one touchdown, but only one pick. He also out threw Fields by about 50 yards, 312 to 265. Antoine Winfield picked up the defensive hat trick, collecting one interception, one forced fumble, and one fumble recovery. Now let's take a quick look at the playoff picture. Like I mentioned before, next week the Bucks are set to host the Seahawks, who beat Washington 45-28 to determine who has the honor of representing the conference in Max Super Bowl VIII. Their opponent will be either Jacksonville or defending champion Las Vegas. Jacksonville whomped Pittsburgh 52-21 in Steeler country, and the Raiders upset the Jets 49-35. And that's going to do it for us this week. I'm Ace510, and for more Max coverage, including live commentary broadcasts, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Ace510. Also, right here on YouTube for more highlight action. Make sure you subscribe to the Triple Coverage podcast to stay up to date in the world of sports. And for players in the league, make sure you archive your streams for your chance to be featured in a video like this. Once again, your final score is 26-21, Tampa Bay over Chicago. And I'll see you next time, right here on Ace510.